Hi, this is Elliot Haspel, and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about comparing fractions, which is a topic near and dear to many teachers' hearts because it can create a lot of heartburn to try to get our students to understand how to compare fractions, especially with unlike denominators. Um, this comes out of an article on Teaching Children Mathematics, an instructor from the University of Central Florida and also a third grade classroom teacher uh, from Florida collaborated to talk about this system that they've developed for teaching fractions by a comparison of fractions really by helping students use their reasoning skills and their number sense. And, I, and so I'm excited to share it with you. And so this idea is really grounded in the concept of benchmark fractions, which is particularly 0, 1 half, and 1, um, and really helping students understand that when you're comparing fractions, we have to think about their reasonableness compared to where they are to the benchmark fractions. And I'll talk about that in just a minute, but first, the first day of this unit, what the teachers did to really prepare their students to use benchmark fractions is they gave them each uh, fraction kits, especially uh, fraction circle kits, so that you could see different pieces compared to the whole circle. Um, and what they did was they took the students through a series of problems to help them understand this idea that we can really visualize what a fraction is relative to a whole. Like, what part of the fraction is relative to the whole. So not just looking at one half as, um, you know, just like a one of two boxes shaded in, but rather looking at one half of, of half of a whole circle. And so they utilize this procedure of conjecture, verify, discuss to have students work with this. So students were posed a question uh, and then they were asked to conjecture, use their mental imagery to think about what the answer might be. So to think about what, does, uh, you know, what's another way of writing four eighths, for example? They're asked to think about what four eighths would look like um, to show that that is equal to one half. Then verify, they were supposed to use their fraction tiles with their fraction circle and actually show that four eighths was in fact equal to one half and then show that to their table mates to justify that. And then discuss. Um, was when they talked about it as a class and defended why four eighths and one half was in fact the same, uh, despite the fact that they look differently. And so in this, they were really pushing the conceptual ideas of both that you can think about what fractions should look like as part of a whole, uh, also that there are some key equivalencies, that there are a lot of different ways to write one half, for example, there are a lot of different ways to write one, um, because that's pretty crucial uh, background understanding if you're going to use benchmark fractions. Then um, they moved on to this idea of using the benchmark fractions to describe uh, fractions and in terms of their, where are they relative to 0, 1 half, or 1. And this wasn't comparison yet. This was still building up to comparison. This is just, if you take the number 9 tenths and you think about it on a number line, you think about it relative to a half and 1 and 0, where is it? And to lead students to see that 9 tenths, it's very nearly 1. In fact, it's 1 tenth away from 1, and it's actually 4 tenths away from 1 half and 9 tenths away from 0. So by using just individual fractions and helping students really manipulate that and think about different ways to talk about it relative to benchmark fractions, again, really building this crucial background conceptual understanding um, of how fractions compare to known fractions uh, for the purpose of comparison. Then the teacher and the, the researcher really dug into this idea of comparison using benchmark fractions. And they helped students see that if you ask the question, which is greater, 5 twelfths or 4 eighths, rather than having to go through the complicated algorithm of creating common denominators and, and multiplying to, to put everything in the common form and comparing that way, there's a pretty easy conceptual check, which is this. 4 eighths is the same as 1 half. 5 twelfths is less than a half because 6 twelfths is a half and 5 is less than 6. Therefore, 4 eighths must be greater. It's a simple but really powerful concept as students can start seeing that actually if you just think about where fractions are relative to a couple of benchmarks, you can have a reasonableness check right there about what the answer must be. Um, and what the teachers did was then they would scaffold with increasingly sophisticated and difficult problems to help students really wrestle with these ideas. 
There's one caveat that the, the authors of this article put out there, one place where teacher, where students tended to have some difficulty, and that was when they ran into two fractions that were on one side of one of the benchmarks, but pretty close together. Um, they give the example of five-eighths and six-tenths, which are both slightly more than a half, but you can't just kind of reason out um, by thinking about it quite as easily which one would be greater. And so here is where they talk to students about the fact that, well, Think about where 5 eighths is on its own relative to a half, and 5 eighths is 1 eighth more than a half, because 4 eighths is a half. And 6 tenths is 1, um, excuse me, it's 1 tenth more than a half, because obviously 5 tenths is a half, therefore if it's 1 eighth more versus 1 tenth more, then 5 eighths must be the greater number. So. This is the, their idea for compare, comparing fractions using number sense. I think it's a very conceptual way to do it. it it's very much different than the, the slow and bulky algorithm. Um, and this is uh, the idea. So thanks a lot and happy teaching.